Is it time for games industry workers to start unionizing? America's biggest labor group says it is, and it might be time to fire Activision's CEO. I'm Demothy Tian, and this is the Weekly Roundup. This is one of the biggest weeks in the gaming industry in terms of trying to make a change. A major figure in one of America's largest labor groups is calling for game developers to start unionizing. AFL-CIO Secretary Treasurer Liz Schuler posted an open letter on Kotaku asking games industry workers to fight against toxic work conditions. Conditions. As many of us know, development crunch is a huge issue in the games industry. A lot of developers have to deal with inadequate pay and ridiculous work hours. Schuler specifically called out Rockstar Games as a major offender, stating, quote, Developers at Rockstar Games recently shared stories of crunch time that lasted for months and even years in order to satisfy outrageous demands from management, delivering a game that banked their bosses $725 million in its first three days. Remember how Rockstar's president, Dan Hauser, seemed to brag about staff working 100-hour work weeks to develop Red Dead Redemption 2. Those numbers are ridiculous, and while several employees spoke out about their experiences not actually being that bad, and Hauser clarified about it being a select few individuals actually doing it, Rockstar still has a pretty bad track record when it comes to crunch, and they're not the only ones with that type of history. News outlet Variety mentions the unfortunate events with Telltale laying off most of their staff with no advance notice or severance pay, and it seems that this is becoming more common as more and more games games industry workers have been getting laid off. Just this week, Activision Blizzard announced they were laying off nearly 800 employees, so basically what Schuler is saying is workers in this field should stop letting these executives take advantage of them. She says the gaming industry is too successful for developers to experience the kind of working conditions they're getting. She also mentions how video game sales last year reached $43 billion, which is more than three times bigger than the film industry's record-breaking box office. This isn't necessarily the first call for unionization in the industry, but it's definitely one of the biggest coming from an organization that oversees over 12 million U.S. workers and over 50 labor unions. And to piggyback off this story, grassroots labor organization Game Workers Unite is also calling for change. Going back to Activision Blizzard laying off almost 800 workers, the organization is calling for the company to fire CEO Bobby Kotick. The group tweeted out saying, quote, upending 800 workers' lives while raking in millions in bonuses for you and your C-suite buddies isn't leadership, it's th we, the workers of Activision and their friends, have had enough join us in saying that it's time to hashtag fire Bobby Kotick. The massive layoff was part of a, quote, deprioritizing of initiatives that didn't meet expectations, which is a little fishy since according to this article by Variety, the publisher reported record revenues last year. Game Workers Unite also mentions how Kotick reportedly makes $30 million a year and is one of the highest paid CEOs in the world. The group goes on to state, it's disgusting to hear Kotick boasting about record revenues for the company, then announcing an 8% staffing cut in the next breath, and just before that mentions how if we divided Kodak's obscene annual pay, it alone could pay full salaries for all 800 laid-off workers. The organization started a petition on Coworker.org that's reached over 2,000 signatures as of this recording. So what do you think? Are you planning to support this petition, and do you think unionization is going to gain more traction in the games industry? Let us know in the comments, and if you like our stuff, get subscribed and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. That's all for now and I'll catch you guys next time.